Now, this week, if you uh, were here on Monday, remember we had our um, stability ball warm up today or on, on Monday, and we have our second of the two stability ball routines today. Now, remember that we do not have to be on the stability ball for our warm up. Okay, we can always sit in a chair as well. Uh, the reason why I like to sit on the ball, have that be an option, is because it really forces us to have activation of all of our core, right? We think of our core as a cylinder, right? The back muscles, the muscles on the side of our torso, and the muscles in the front, right? We don't want to think of the core as just a six pack, okay? So I like the ball for that reason. Another reason why I like it is because I think I might have ADHD or something like that, and I just like to move, all right? I'm one of those people that can't seem to sit still very much. Um, and one of the, one of the, probably my number one favorite warm up I ever ran in the exercise clinic is on the stability ball bouncing while we go about our dynamic stretch and movements in our warm up. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as we go that I'm going to be using the ball here and I, I welcome you to use it as well. You can sit on the ball and be still like this. And we can still get some good core work as we go about our different movements and stuff like that that we're going to do here. Um, but again, if you're not comfortable on the ball, you can always just sit on a chair. Okay? So you can bounce on the ball, sit on the ball, be still, or sit in the chair. All right? And I got my stopwatch. This is my Walmart stopwatch, and it's starting to show that it's from Walmart. It's already starting to break here a little bit. So hopefully it can carry me through the last, uh, I think, nine weeks or so this semester. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So find your chair or your ball here, class, whatever you're comfortable with. We're going to go about our dynamic warm up here together. Now, excuse me, we're going to go into our arm circles to start. I'm going to make sure this chair is not too close. I don't want to smack my finger on it. Okay. Now we're going to start, like I said, arm circles. Let's get those arms up to shoulder height. Remember which direction you're going from the start. We're going to start off small and get larger and larger at your own pace. All right, we're going to get ourselves started in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Now, if you're choosing to bounce on the ball like I am, again, it can be a little tougher to time out your circles or your arm swings or whatever you're doing with the bounce, right? So it can be kind of something, it can be something different to kind of get used to. And larger and larger, checking the time. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. Now from here, class, let's do the same thing. Go in the opposite direction. Starting off small. Small circles. And larger and larger at your own pace. If you're bouncing, again, try to time the circle with the bounces. Here we go, three, Two, one, relax, good. Let those arms come down and dangle for a second. After a while, after we bounce for a while in your class, you might start to notice your hamstrings and your glutes feeling a little fatigued, right? Because those muscles are working to help, help us move. And then our core, again, is working to keep us upright on this ball. Now let's go into some arm swings here, all right? So again, making sure that chair, I'm not gonna hit it. I'm going to go into our swings. I'm going to point the thumb down and then point the thumb back up as I go. As always, we'll go 30 seconds here, class. Go ahead and start if you haven't already. This warm up is going to be a lot more fluid. All right, we're just going to go, 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 go all the way through. Pinch the shoulders back, open up the chest. Really dynamic, versatile stretch here. Checking the time, got five seconds left, keep it up. Three, two, one, relax, very good. Let those arms come down and dangle. Now we're gonna go into our vertical reaches, all right? So I'm going to reach up to the ceiling, 
Again, incorporate a little bit of a twist. Really stretch those fingers out as you go. Go ahead and start if you haven't already. Open up that chest a little bit more. Very good. Remember the lower body is gonna stay, excuse me, facing forward as we reach up to the ceiling with our slight twist. Five seconds left. Three, two, one, relax, very good. All right, from here, class, let's expand on that twisting and go into our standing torso, to our, sorry, seated torso twist. We're not standing here. And I can maintain my balances as I go as well. I'm keeping my lower body forward. My upper body's turning 90 degrees. We'll go for about 15 more seconds here, class. There we go. Again, it's all about turning the chest to the wall while the lower body stays put. Three, two, one, relax, very good. Let's expand on that twisting now, okay? I wanna turn that standing, or that seated torso twist, sorry, into a cross body punch here, all right? So just like we do in the cardio set, I'm going to punch out, get a nice twist, go ahead and start if you haven't already. Again, the lower body stays looking forward. Get the belly button to follow that fist as it goes out. Again, we're punching at shoulder height. We don't want to be slouching forward and punching low to the ground, right? Punch to shoulder height. Got five seconds left, keep it up. Three, two, one, relax, very good. I got three more for us here, class. The next one here is gonna be a heel dig or a kick, all right? Those are the two options here. I'm gonna alternate between my right and my left legs. I'm gonna step out, heel dig, come back in. Other foot, step out, heel dig, come back in. I'm gonna go back and forth at my own pace. Now, if I wanna make this a little tougher, okay, create a little bit more of a balance challenge, I'm going to kick rather than heel dig, okay? Try to keep your torso steady over the ball, if that's what you choose, if you're gonna use the kick, all right? We'll go with this for a few more seconds, about 15 more seconds here, class. Keep it up. All right, this is more of a forward, backward kick. We'll get into a little more of a lateral kick here shortly. Three, two, one. Relax, very good. Now from here, class, we're gonna go into more of, like I said, a lateral. So again, we can start with that heel dig. Dig the heel out to the side now. Kind of open up the legs a little bit. Maybe feel a little bit of a stretch in the groin. Again, you're going at your own pace. Or you can turn this into a little bit more of a kick, all right? The kick tends to be a little more fast paced because you gotta get your foot back especially if you're on the ball, all right? We'll go for about 15 more seconds here. See, I kind of really leaned over on that one, right? Now I'm really leaning. Try to stay steady over the ball. It's all right if you move a little bit, but try to stay over the ball as you kick out to the side a little bit more. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. Now I've got one last thing for us here, class. This is gonna be our jumping jacks, okay? Now, in the past, what I've had us do, if we're all on the, on the stability ball, is I've had us reach our hands up, like the jumping jack, and then come down and clap the ball, okay? Now, if you're in a chair, you're probably not gonna to wanna to be clapping the chair legs, right? It's gonna hurt your hands. Uh, but if you're on the ball there at home, just feel free to kind of come down and give that ball a nice tap. If you want to tap the chair lightly, you certainly can if you are doing a, if you're using the chair today. But I want to talk about a few options for this jumping jack. So right now we're just maintaining some balances if we're in the ball. And like I said, I'm going to bring my arms up, but I can also move my legs if I want to. So I can do just the arms or I can get a heel dig, all right? So now I'm getting arms up. 
I'm alternating, getting a heel dig out, okay? So that's my second option right there. Now, my third option is to get both my legs out, a little faster paced here, okay? So find whatever you're comfortable with here in class. I just wanna get your whole body moving for this last one, all right? And we'll go for about, we'll go for 30 seconds here on this one, okay? Ready? Go ahead and start with me if you haven't already. I'm just gonna go with the half jack progression. This is the exact same one as my favorite one for the cardio, right? Both arms and one leg, right? I feel like I get a nice rhythm with this one. I'm lightly tapping my ball here. I'm not trying to be too loud with it. There's a light tap on the ball as I come down. Or the chair, if you're using the chair. There we go. Three, two, one. Relax, very good. All righty, now we do not need the stability ball or much of anything else today. I'm gonna let him roll around and uh, hopefully he doesn't get too far, all right? Now, gonna move on here to our balance class. So, we already worked a lot on balance if you're on the stability ball, all right? We're gonna get a little bit more uh, standing balance today uh, like we do every day after our warm up. So, remember our two movements, I guess you could call it a movement, that we are doing with our balance stances today. We have our head up and down. Again, going to a comfortable range of motion for the neck, okay? We're not pushing past the point of mild discomfort there, okay? Um, that'll be our first pro uh, progression for today. And then we have our step up from that, which is gonna be closing the eyes, right? So that's a little bit more advanced than the 12 inch finger focus because now we're taking the vision out completely, okay? And really making those two other balance systems work even harder and get better, okay? So don't forget class, two, two more things. Remember we have our wide, narrow, staggered tandem stance choose between one of those four, and then don't forget we can also go back to bringing the arms up, bringing one arm up at a time, all right, or you can do the 12 inch finger, all right? Just because I'm not emphasizing those previous or older progressions doesn't mean that you can't do them. So I'm gonna find my chair or my wall. I want you to pick a stance. I want you to pick a movement that you're gonna pair with your stance and we're gonna knock out our first set of 20 seconds together in three, two, and one. Ready? Go ahead. I'm going the head up and down. Nice controlled motion. No reason to rush something like this. Again, I'm going to a point of mild discomfort. So if I start to feel any pain, I'm not gonna go that far anymore. Three, two, one, relax, very good. Now from here, class, I'm gonna go into the narrow stance, all right? You don't have to switch stances as often as I do. I'm just trying to demonstrate all the different ones we have, all right? So we have our second set of 20 seconds. Uh, we're gonna knock that out together in three, two, and one, ready? Go ahead, head up, head back down for me, because that's the one I chose. Again, you do whatever progression's best for you. Nice job. About eight seconds left, keep it up. Three, two, one, relax, very good. Now from here, class, I'm going to go into my staggered stance. So if you've been doing staggered or tandem class, remember to be switching your feet so that way you have a different foot out in front. Um, and I would do that evenly so each foot gets to be out in front twice, all right, out of four sets. I'm going to go with the eyes closed, okay? But remember, I'm going to cheat so I can see the time a little bit too, okay? So I got my chair here. We're going to knock out our third set together in three, two, and one. Go ahead. My eyes are shut. 
restricting my vision completely. Make sure you're breathing. Gonna cheat here. Seven seconds left, keep it up. Three, two, one, relax, very good. Last time through your class, set number four, I'm gonna switch feet and I'm gonna go with my staff, my tandem, sorry, my tandem stance, and I'm gonna go with the eyes closed one more time, all right? So go ahead and uh, get yourself situated here. We're gonna get started in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Feeling a little wobbly here with my eyes closed in my tandem stance. Checking the time, seven seconds to go. Three, two, one, relax, very good. All righty class, that's it for our balance already. I'm gonna get this chair out of the way and we're gonna go over our two power sets. All right, so I'm gonna turn my uh, laptop to the wall. Remember class on Friday, Monday and Friday, we have the catch step as always, but the different exercise that we pair with it depends on the day. It's Friday, so we're gonna be doing the wall-assisted knee drives. And I'm gonna turn my camera up slightly, all right? So, remember with this exercise here, it's like we're doing our wall plank, okay? Or our elevated push-up. We wanna be nice and flat from our head all the way to our ankle, right? We don't wanna be pushing our hips back too far. We don't want to be letting our hips sink in either, right? We want to be nice and stable. Then from here, I'm going to quickly pull my knee up. You see my toes are pulled up to my nose as well. And then I'm going to let my leg down with control. All right, and we're alternating. So now my opposite leg is going to come up and come right back down again. Knee up as high as you can, as quickly as you can, and pull those toes up. Okay, lastly, your class, remember your breathing, okay? As you are quickly lifting your knee, you're going to breathe out through the mouth, and then you're gonna be breathing back in through the nose as you bring your leg down with control, okay? So remember that noise that I make when I breathe out of my mouth as I come up. Hopefully you can hear that and come right back down. I'm breathing out as I explosively lift my leg, okay? Now, I'd like us to do two sets of 30 seconds with that one, and then for the catch step, same idea as before, two sets of 30 seconds on that one, alternating between right and left, okay? Now, I'm gonna start with this wall-assisted knee drive because I think it complements that catch step really well, all right? So I got my stopwatch here. Find your spot on the wall, okay? Make sure you're in that good plank or elevated push-up position. And we are going to get ourselves started in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Quick reps here. You want to bring that knee up as fast as you can, right? As fast as you can. Very good, seven seconds left. Keep it up here, class. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. Now from here, I'm gonna stay at the wall for this first set of the catch step because remember, we can have this as a little bit of a balance support if you feel like you're gonna lose your, your balance going forward, okay? So we have our starting position and we're allowing gravity to begin our forward motion, and then the leg reacts, right? And here's exactly why I like the knee drive, because here, in order to catch yourself, right, you gotta pull your knee up and get that foot out in front of you, okay? So we'll go 30 seconds here. Get yourself situated. We're getting started in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Again, take your time, let gravity start you off. 
Very good. We're 10 seconds in. I've only done three steps, right? I'm taking my time. Very good. Got my wall here. If I need that little extra support, three, two, one. Relax. Very good. Now I'm going to stay here at the wall one last time. We're going to do one more set of the wall assisted knee drives. Okay, we've got 30 more seconds. Remember the breathing there, class. It's very important. Okay, we're going to get ourselves started in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Picking the toes up with the knee, right? We don't want to let those toes dangle. Just like on our stepping mechanics day, right? We want to pull the toes up as we pull the knee up. 10 seconds left, keep it up. Three, two, one, relax, very good. Now, the final set of catch steps, I'm going to do more out in the open floor, okay? Without that extra balance support, but again, if you feel like you need that extra balance support, uh, stay there at that wall, all right? I'm gonna turn my camera up just a little bit. All right, so last 30 seconds on the catch step, and then we're gonna hit the resistance training for the day, all right? We're gonna get ourselves started in three, Two and one. Go ahead. Take your time. Let gravity do the start off. Very good. Nice large steps, right? We're working on taking larger steps here. Last 10 seconds to go. Three. Two, one, relax, very good. All right, class, get a sip of water for me here. Uh, catch your breath if you need to. I'm gonna go over our first super set for the day. Now, the first exercise I have for us is going to be directly related to the catch step, okay? That's gonna be our forward, backward steps, all right? So, now, this is gonna be a little bit more different then just letting gravity start us off, okay? Now you are consciously aware of the fact that you want to step forward, okay? So we might go a little quicker here. It doesn't mean that we're gonna be speedily going back and forth, okay? It just means that you might be able to get a few more steps in than you do for the catch step, okay? If I was gonna do this from the side here, again, I want you to kind of go off of a comfortable range of motion, right? I don't expect you all to be lunging all the way down, okay? Uh, not by any means, but just find a comfortable range of motion, all right, where you can still exert some force on the floor and get back to your starting position, okay? Now, in addition to that, though, class, I also want you to kind of push past that level of comfortability. Uh, to an extent, because I want you to, again, work on getting those larger steps, right? We've talked about that multiple times with the catch step, right? Trying to get ourselves to be able to take larger steps. That's important because as we get older, we start to take those short shuffling steps. And the more that we rely on short shuffling steps, the greater chance of our function decreasing, okay? We want to take those larger steps and keep our function increasing, right? So, again, push past that comfort level and start getting slightly larger steps. Hopefully, you've been noticing that over the last seven weeks that you're feeling more comfortable taking bigger steps as you go about your day, okay? Now, we'll do that for two sets of 30 seconds, very much like the power sets that we did earlier. And the upper body exercise I want to pair with that is going to be our dumbbell slide, okay? Now that's going to be with the light dumbbells because I'd like to go with two sets of 15 reps, all right? So if I was going to be in my athletic position here, 
I want to make sure I have a nice forward bend. I don't want to turn this exercise into something else. Okay, so I've got a nice forward lean, hips and knees are bent, back is flat, and I'm going to start either with my arms bent, right? So it's like I'm making a goal post here, okay? Or I can go with my arms straight. Either way, if I go with my arms bent, which is going to be a little easier, or if I go with my arms out straight, I want to make sure that I'm pinching my shoulders back, right? We want to work on uh, getting the muscles of our upper back and shoulder uh, to feel stronger today, all right? Going through that endurance set, two sets of 15, all right? Now, let's go ahead and start with our forward, backward steps. Now, I'm going to go with the frontal view because I also want to talk about the knee, all right? When you step forward, you want that knee lined up over the toe, right? We do not want the knee to cave in like this. So just imagine you've got your wall on the outside of your body, on the outside of your knee, and you are thinking about touching the outside of your knee to that wall as you go. All right, so let's get our first set of 30 seconds here. We're gonna get ourselves started in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Again, might be able to take a few more steps here because we know that we're stepping forward. Keep that knee aligned over the toe. Really push off the ground here, class, to get back to your starting position. When you're stepping out, push down and forward into the floor. Get back to your starting position. There we go. Three, two, one. Relax. Very good. Now I'm going to find my dumbbells here. Again, I'd like you to go with your light dumbbells today because of the number of reps that we're doing for each set. And I'm gonna go with my bent arm set uh, for this first one here, all right? So I'm getting set athletically. Nice bend, nice forward lean. We're gonna get ourselves started in three, two, and one, right? Coming out and back in. That's one. Keeps the shoulders back on every rep. That's two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one to fifteen, ten, five more, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And 15, very good. All right, that was the bent arm set. Remember, I'm gonna go with the straight arm set uh, for the second one time, second time through. Make sure you're doing whatever's comfortable for you there, okay? I'm gonna go back to the forward or frontal view here uh, because again, I wanna make sure that I'm reinforcing the alignment of the knee over the toe. That's so important, okay? So we got one more set of 30 seconds. We're gonna knock this out together in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Really push off the floor. Push off the floor, push backward, get back to your starting position. Keep the chest up, right? We don't wanna be hunching over. We wanna keep that good posture as we go. Just like with everything else, right? Keep that good posture. Eight seconds left, keep it up. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. That's already it for our forward backward steps. Let's knock out our last set of the dumbbell fly. And like I said earlier, I'm going now with the straight arm set. So I'm going to find my athletic position once again. Let's knock this set out together in three, Two and one, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10, five more, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Very good. All right, do me a favor here, class. Grab a sip of water. Catch your breath if you need to. Let's go over our second superset. Now, I hope that you all saw my email from last night. I sent it kind of late last night, but hopefully you had time to see it this morning. Um, but I'd like to do our second lower body exercise today with the laundry basket, right? We kind of worked on deadlifts a little bit on Wednesday. Uh, if you chose to do your overhead pillow slam to the floor, right? We worked on picking that pillow up with a nice flat back, pushing the hips back, shoving the knees out, right? Well, we're gonna go back to the base exercise for that, which is our laundry basket deadlift. And you see here, I have my laundry basket, all right? Just something that has raised handles, okay? It doesn't have to be an actual basket. Heck, if you've got two kettlebells there at home, you could be doing the same thing, all right? If you have just like a, a big wicker basket, like I have at home, we have a big, Wicker basket that we keep blankets in in our living room and it has handles on the side, just like that. And I could be using that too. All right, just something that I don't have to go all the way to the floor to pick up. Right, I know that we kind of have to do that for the pillow. All right, but I still think that that pillow slam is a great opportunity to work on those mechanics. Okay, so like always, class, we start off the rep on the floor. Got my chest up, eyes up, hips are back. Back is nice and flat. I stand straight up and then come right back down those floor. All right. So um, I'll continue to kind of talk about that technique as we go throughout the set. I'd like to do two sets of 12 today uh, for that exercise. Now, the uh, upper body exercise that I want to pair with the laundry basket deadlift is actually gonna be our elevated push-up, right? And we kind of talked about that a little bit earlier today when I mentioned the starting position for the wall-assisted knee drives, right? I'm finding a spot on my wall here, and I'm walking my feet out, okay? And I'm in a, a plank position here. I wanna make sure that my hips aren't back, they're not sinking down, but from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bend my elbows, come toward the wall, and then push away from the wall, okay? Just like that. Now, I wanna show myself doing this from the back as well, okay? Because I see so many people do their push-ups like this. Okay, they do their push-ups with the elbow down here, okay? We don't wanna do that. We do not wanna do our, our push-ups with the elbows out there, okay? We wanna focus on keeping the elbows in. All right, and I think a great way to, to remember that is think about your row, okay? We do the bent over row quite a bit in this class, and when we do that, we pull our hands toward the rib cage or toward the armpit. Well, look at my elbows, all right? My elbows are about 45 degrees out. They're not out here. They're not down touching my body either, right? They're out a little bit, okay? What's well, the same idea, because your push-up and your row are literally the exact same movement, they're just a different direction, right? One of them you're pulling backward, one of them you're pushing forward, they're the exact same motion, all right? So that's why our push-up needs to be the exact same motion, right? We keep the elbows in. Now, it might not be perfectly identical to your row, depending on where you're at in your house, right? Some of us, excuse me, some of us might need to be at a wall okay, for our push-ups, right? Because that elevation makes the push-up a little bit easier. You can also be at a chair, okay? I would just make sure that your chair is actually kind of shoved up against the wall so it doesn't slide on you, okay? And I would also probably not do the back of the chair because I don't want to be pushing on it and then have that happen, okay? So if I'm gonna use a chair, I would use more of the seat of the chair and again, work on keeping my elbows in, all right? So we'll do two sets of six with that push-up here today, class, to pair with the two sets of 12 
on the deadlift, all right? So and I'd actually like to start with that deadlift. I'm gonna find my kettlebells. I'll do a side view for this per set, all right? So I have my quote unquote basket and I'm going to find my starting position. We're gonna get ourselves started in three, two, and one. Ready? Coming straight up and right back down. That's one. Keep the chest out. Chest and eyes are up. That's two, I think. Three, four, push the hips back. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two more, eleven. And 12. There we go. Actually, I think, I think I ended up doing like 13 there. All right. Sorry about that, class. A couple extra reps are going to hurt, though. All right. I'm going to get those off to the side. Now, let's find our wall here. I'm going to go back to where we do our, our uh, wall-assisted uh, knee drives. Okay. So here, again, I'm finding my elevation. Again, it's wherever you're comfortable in your house. All right. So. Got my hands set, got my plank position ready to go. We're gonna knock out six reps together in three, two, and one. Ready? Coming down and back up. That's one. Keep those elbows in. That's two, three, four, two more, five, and six. Very good. Now I kind of have this railing here that kind of prevents me from getting a little closer. All right, so we're just gonna pretend that uh, that railing isn't there. All right, now let's knock out our last set of our laundry basket deadlift. I'm gonna do a frontal view this time so I can talk more about the knees, right? Just like with the squat, with the lunge, with the RDL, and with the deadlift, you wanna make sure that as we're coming down, and coming back up, that we are keeping our knees shoved out. You saw when I did that there, I let my knees cave in, all right? We do not want that, we want the knees shoved out. All right, just like with everything else. So, I'm gonna find my deadlift starting position, and we're gonna knock out 12 reps. I'm gonna count them correctly this time, all right? In three, two, and one, ready? Coming up, and right back down, that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, going to twelve, that's eleven. And 12, very good. All right, now I'm gonna move these kettlebells off to the side. I should not need them for anything else today. There we go. And I'm just gonna go right back to where I was for the uh, push-up, okay? We've got one more set of six. We're gonna knock these out together, and then we're gonna get to our final resistance training set for the day, all right? So find your push-up position at your preferred space. We're gonna knock out six reps together in three, two, and one. Ready, I'm coming down and back up. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Very good. All right, catch your breath for me, class. Get a sip of water, and I'm going to go over. Actually, I'm going to make sure I know what I'm doing first for our next superset. I'm also going to check one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. Now I'm going to go to Excel. I know the core, but I think I forgot the shoulder one. Okay. Good. 
And we got a short little cool down for us too. So I'm gonna get that out of my way. Back to Big Chris and full screen. All righty, so the first exercise I have for us is one that we have become uh, increasingly familiar with. We've done it a few times now in the online class this fall. That's gonna be our upright row, okay? So I make a big deal about the dumbbell fly and the bent over row class. You know, we wanna find that good athletic position with a nice forward, forward lean so that we don't turn the exercise into something else. Well, here's an exception to that, right? We call it the upright row for a reason. We're still gonna have our hips and knees bent, but now I'm gonna be a little more upright, right? I'm not getting that lean anymore. And I'm gonna have my dumbbell starting near my thigh here as well. So from here, I'm gonna pull my weights up to my belly, or not my belly button, to my armpits. There we go, and my elbows, are pointing up toward the ceiling there, and then I come right back down to the start, okay? Now, with that one, I wanna do two sets of 15 reps with the uh, lighter weights today, okay? So two sets of 15 with the lighter weights. Now, one thing I want you to think about here, class, is your posture, right? This exercise actually puts you in a little bit of a bad posture position. Now it's not in the traditional sense, right? It's not like this exercise forces you to round out or anything like that, but what it does do is it gets the head of your upper arm bone or your humerus to kind of rotate forward and that can decrease the space between a part of your shoulder blade and your top of your upper arm bone and that can actually create a shoulder impingement, okay? So the question is, now, why do we do this then if the potential for that extra, for that problem exists, right? Well, we still wanna work on the upright row because this works our internal rotator muscles, okay? Those internal rotator muscles are a part of our rotator cuff and we wanna make sure that we work both parts of the rotator cuff, right? We have parts of that muscle group that internally rotate, we have parts of that group that externally rotate, okay? So we're gonna do this exercise today and in the future, okay? But one of the ways that we can avoid that being a problem, right? Having that upper arm bone rotate forward and create an impingement is by, again, thinking about our posture, right? That's why we work on the row. That's why we work on the fly. That's why we work on posture and why I talk about it constantly, right? You're probably getting sick of me talking about it right now. Right? We talk about that posture because we are working on a, helping those types of problems, uh, helping us avoid those types of problems, is what I should have said there. Right? And when we are able to avoid those types of problems, it makes exercises like this all right, uh, not quite as worrisome for me all right, as far as creating an issue there. Okay? So two sets of 15 with this one. Now the exercise I want to pair with that is gonna be the elevated quadruped. Now that's gonna be a little bit of a less familiar one. This can be done in a chair or a wall, okay? And again, we're kinda of getting right back into that same position that we've been in for the wall plank, right? This, this time now what I'm doing is I'm going to work on lifting a leg out and bringing it right back in, okay? And I can alternate as I go. So right now, I'm just doing my legs. That's all I'm doing, okay? But what I wanna kinda progress toward is being able to lift my right leg and my left arm, okay? So now I'm really having to focus on my balance with my two limbs as I go. Being at the wall is gonna make it quite a bit easier, okay? I do not have to worry quite as much about difficulty at the wall. As I go to more of a, uh, I guess, less of an incline, all right, I'm going to be putting a little bit more pressure on my core to keep it stable, all right? So if I were to do this at a chair, again, I want the chair to be braced up against the wall. I'm gonna find this position here, and I'm gonna work on lifting my right arm and my left leg, bring them back in, then doing the same thing on the other side. Left arm and 
and right leg coming out as I go. All right? The last thing I'm going to say, because I'm starting to run out of time here, we're probably only going to get one set of each of these exercises here. But one thing I want to say is that we do not want to be putting our back into a, I guess you could say a cow position, right? We work on some exercises sometimes in the face-to-face -face class, the cat and the cow. I'm sure you've all done it before. I was going to do some of those here, right? The cat is putting the back up and the cow is bringing the, the back, bringing, sticking the belly button toward the floor, right? Something that can happen with this exercise is we start to allow our back to go in that cow a little bit too much. And now my back is uncomfortable because I bent it forward a little bit too much, okay? So when we're doing this, whether we're at the wall or the chair, I want you to think about staying in that cap position a little bit more, okay? That doesn't mean I want you to round out and have bad posture on purpose. It just means that I want you to avoid that cow position and keep yourself in that cat a little bit more, all right? As you go with lifting your opposite limbs, okay? Now, I've done plenty of talking here. Let's knock out one set of the upright row, okay? We'll do that, and then we'll go to the quadruped, and we'll knock out some cardio, all right? So, I'm gonna find my sort of athletic position, right? Hips and knees are bent, I'm a little more upright. We're gonna get ourselves started in three, two, and one. Ready? I'm coming up and back down. That's one. Up to the armpit, back down, that's two. Like we're pouring the pot of coffee here. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, going to fifteen, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and 15. Very good. Like I said, class, we'll only do one set of the upright row. We get a little extra explanation for the upright row today, and then a little bit more time explaining the quadruped, right? Because it is a little bit newer. So let's find our position, all right? I'm going to be kind of like in my modified burpee position here, class, right? You remember that one. So from here, class, again, I'm keeping myself a little bit more in the cat as opposed to the cow. I want you to work on either just lifting your legs and coming back down, or you can work on lifting your opposite arm and leg together, okay? We'll go for 30 seconds on this one in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Keep that cat position. You can alternate left arm and right leg, right arm and left, uh, left leg, there you go. Left arm, right leg, right arm and left leg. I'm not gonna say that over and over, I don't wanna mess you up. 10 seconds left. Three, two, one, relax, very good. Now class. Grab a sip of water here. I know that we only did one set of each, but I'm gonna go over our cardio here next. And I actually don't need to get rid of my chair because we're actually gonna be doing that modified burpee today, all right? So I like pairing the exercises I have together because uh, there's a lot of similarities between them in this particular workout. So, like I said, modified burpee. We are going to be in our same position that I was just in for the quadruped, right? I can either step back and then stand up and clap, or I can jump back and clap, okay? Either way, do not forget your clap there, okay? That's a big important part of that exercise today. Now, the exercise that I wanna pair with that one is gonna be our V step, okay? So remember the V-step, we have two narrow spots where our feet start, and then two wider spots out in front of us 
uh, that our feet step out toward. So I'm going to work on going wide, wide, narrow, narrow in this one. Okay? So uh, we'll talk about all the different ways that we can modify that to make it tougher uh, as you prefer uh, as we go through those sets. Both exercises are going to be three sets of 45 seconds today, and then we'll knock out that cool down. All right? So let's start off with that uh, burpee today. Ah, one more. I'm actually going to go blow my nose here really fast, class. Really quickly. Here we go. Get some Purell in my hands after that before I touch my equipment again. All right. And we're going to go ahead and get ourselves started with that modified burpee in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Either step back or jump back. All right. Whatever you prefer. There we go. Now, how do we modify this one here, class? We can step back farther or jump back farther or we can do it faster right there's not really any any way to get lower on this one right but we can still modify this one to make it more intense if you want to we've got 15 seconds left before our transition keep it up three two one, relax and reset, B-step, right? Wide, wide, narrow, narrow, all right? Go ahead, remember, you can alternate which foot you start with. We can start with the left and then start with the right. Again, that's gonna make your brain work a little bit more. Keep that breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Now, kind of like I was saying with the, uh, the modified burpee, we can't get low with the burpee as much, but we can do that here, right? If you want to make that, you want to make the V-step a little tougher, you can get a little more bend to the hip and the knee here, all right? Three, two, one. Relax and reset. Back to the burpee. I'm going to do the jump back here. Don't forget the clap. There we go. I gotta be careful because my chair is braced up against the wall here. Got about 20 seconds left here, class. Keep it up. Nice job. Keep your breathing into the nose and up to the mouth as always. Three, two. One, relax and reset. Back to the V step. There we go. As we begin to fatigue, remember that posture, right? Stay up nice and tall, big chest, pinch the shoulders. Work on keeping your eyes up a little bit too, right? That's another progression I don't talk about quite as much. You can work on looking ahead, but yet keeping the same pattern with your steps. That's gonna demonstrate really good control over your lower body. If you can keep your eyes up, but yet stay in your same pattern. We're gonna transition in three, two, and one. Last time you run the burpee. Go ahead. I'm going back to the step here. Keep it up here, class. We've only got one more set of the burpee which we're going through now, and then one last set of the V-step coming up shortly, about 25 seconds left. There we go. I can only see the numbers on my stopwatch when I get down to the chair. Three, two, one, relax and reset. B step one last time through. Get nice and wide on those two forward steps. I'll do a side view here, right? Keep the posture as best you can. 
Chest up, eyes up. Very nice. We've got 25 seconds left here, class. Keep it up. Then we got a nice short little cool down to get us through this session. 15 seconds. Keep that breathing. Very nice. Three, two, one. Relax. Awesome job here, class. Catch your breath, get a sip of water. I can kind of breathe out my nose a little bit better there. There we go. I'm gonna go back to the gallery and I'll wait for some thumbs. I see a couple thumbs there. Awesome, let me know when you're ready. In the last week and a half or so, I've had my attendance go down a little bit. Must be a lot of people busy or maybe not feeling well. Hopefully all of those that are feel, have been not feeling well uh, are getting better and will hopefully be able to come back soon. I see all those thumbs. I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'll go back to Big Chris here. There we go. So like I said, just a short little cool down today, right? Only four stretches. And it's because a lot of those stretches that I have for us for today uh, really complement more than one exercise that we did today, all right? So the first one I'm gonna have us do is gonna be, we've done it before, we just don't do it very often again because it's not one of my favorite stretches, right? But just because it's not one of my favorites doesn't mean that uh, somebody in the audience uh, won't like it either, okay? So, or will will like it. So, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put my hands on the wall here, and remember, I have my space between the wall and the floor. I know this railing is kind of in the way, but I have this space between my body, the wall, the arm, and the floor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach my opposite hand through that space. Okay, right, we call this one the thread the needle stretch. Not because it's like actually threading a needle, but because, right, we're just sending a limb through a space, okay? And what this stretch is supposed to be kind of similar to is that arm reach across, right? It's that same motion as bringing the arm through the space, okay? And if the target is the upper back muscles and the back of the shoulder muscles, you want to make sure that you're getting a nice shoulder pinch as you reach across and reach through that space, okay? So just a, a nice way to kind of throw some variety in there for us, okay? I'd like us to get 30 seconds on each side, all right? Which means I'll have my left hand on the wall and reach my right arm through, then vice versa. Right hand on the wall, reach the left hand through, okay? I got my stopwatch here. We're gonna go ahead and get ourselves started in three, two, and one. Go ahead. Just reaching through that big space. We could do this one on the floor as well. I think that doing it on the wall might be a little bit easier for those of us who uh, are not as comfortable getting on and off the floor, which is fine. We have 10 seconds left. Three, two, one. Relax, very good. Now this next one here, I'm just gonna do a little bit of mime work and kind of pretend that I'm on the wall. So that last time I had my right arm going through, now I'm gonna put the right arm, right, on my imaginary wall, okay? And now I have my space, I'm gonna put my left arm through, all right? And we'll go for 30 more seconds. Go ahead, if you haven't already started, 30 seconds. About halfway through. Our next stretch will be at the wall as well. I wanna make sure that we target the chest and the front of the shoulder muscles, right? Just like with the upright row in the standing chest press. Three, two, one, relax. Very good, I meant to say push up there, not chest press. We didn't do that today. 
although those are the exact same motion as well, right? We talk about exercises being similar. That chest press that we do, the dumbbells, again, is the exact same motion as the push-up and as the row, right? They're just different directions. So with this one here, class, don't forget, we can also, we can have our hand be a little bit lower on the wall, or we can raise it up. Now, having the hand lower, I think, is going to target more of the shoulder on the front side of the shoulder, whereas bringing the arm up is going to get the shoulder and a little bit more of the chest. Okay, so I might feel a little bit more inclined to do the upper reaching stretch to get that chest involved, but you do whatever you prefer here. All right, we're going to go for about 30 seconds together. Go ahead if you haven't already started. Oops. I think what happened to my stopwatch is the, the, the start button is kind of like sunk in. So when I push it, it doesn't move, but it still like starts and stops the stopwatch. And now it's like super sensitive. I think I might have stepped on it or something, or it got kind of broke into my bag a little bit. Three, two, one, relax. We'll switch sides here. Okay, again, I'm gonna just pretend that I have a wall. All right, go ahead. I'm going with more of the uh, upper reach because I wanna target more of the chest here today. All right, because we did do those push-ups. About halfway through on this one and then we'll go to our uh, quadriceps options here. Keep that breathing here, class. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. Now I'm gonna let my arms dangle a little bit here if I want to. And I'm also gonna find my chair. All right, you can be at a chair or a wall for a couple of these here, but we're just gonna do our more classic quadricep options, right? I have my staggered stance stretch, which we're all very familiar with, right? Lift on the back heel push the hips forward and sink that back knee, right? That's where we can be at the wall still, where we can have our chair. Same thing with the standing quad pull. All right, a little bit of balance with those two stretches. Or we can go to, to sitting on our chair and getting our assisted kneeling stretch, okay? So pick whichever one of those options you prefer. We're gonna go with 30 seconds on each side for whatever choice you pick. In three, two, and one. Go ahead. All of these require posture, right? Even though the first two only kind of require balance there a little bit more. The chair assisted lunge doesn't require as much balance, but we still want to keep the chest up, shoulders pitched. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. Let's switch sides. I'm going to do the chair assisted lunge again here. All right. And we'll go ahead for 30 more seconds. Stay up nice and tall. There we go. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. I said that we were going to do diaphragmatic breathing a few weeks ago, and we haven't really done it. I'll have to include that into a session one of these days here. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. Now, the last stretch I have for us for today, class, is going to be our hamstring stretch, our more classic version of the hamstring stretch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn. Oops, I'm a little louder than I want it to be. But I'm just going to turn my chair and give a little bit of a side view, right? We've done this stretch plenty of times. I'm just going to scoot to the front, keep my posture sound, and I'm going to dig my heels in as I lean forward and get this nice stretch in my hamstrings here, right? We'll go for about 40 seconds on this one, and then we'll be done for the day. All right, go ahead. Keep my breathing and my posture. 
Again, this is just like the RDL. We didn't do RDL today, all right? But again, this is just that same position. I had to think about that for a second. Did we do RDL today? No, we didn't. 18 seconds, keep it up. We did the, the laundry basket deadlift. The deadlift is a nice hybrid exercise between squat and RDL. It's kind of an in-between movement. Three, two, one, relax. Very good. That's all that I have for you for today, class. <clears throat> I want to thank you all so much for participating once again. And uh, I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll see you on uh, Monday.